Father, we give you all the praise this morning. And we ask that today you will make us a better version of ourselves. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please have your sitting God's prayers and spirit, people of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay, this morning it's a prayer service and I would be talking again about the power of prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I want us to move very fast because I also want us to pray uh, because it's a prayer service. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, the subject of prayer um, is something that we cannot do away with as believers. Um, one of the things woven into the fabric of our being as believers is the concept of prayer. So prayer is one of the um, one of the one of the uh, the let me say it in a simpler way. Prayer is um, that lifestyle that sustains a believer. So prayer is very important to believers. So that's why you can never talk too much about prayer. You can never speak a lot about prayer because prayer is what we would do till Jesus come. So it's very important. So the more you, um, the more you go deeply into the concept of prayer, the more you are able to unnest the, the depth and the wealth within that prayer. And the more you are able to you know, produce an effective uh, praying life. So that's the reason I'm still talking about the power of prayer this morning. And sometimes, you know, it may look like the mystery of prayer again. Glory to Jesus. Um, one of the popular questions is that people would always ask that, what would prayer do for me? Um, what would prayer do for me? Why do I need to embark on prayer? Why do I need to um, engage in this principle called prayer? Um, this morning, I want to tell you this first thing that Prayer can reverse negative outcomes. Prayer can reverse negative outcome. Prayer can reverse negative outcome. Lamentation chapter 3 verse 37. Glory. Prayer has the ability to reverse negative outcome. You can see over there. Who is he that say it or speak it? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, media, please, if you can you, if you can really help me with the NKJV, um, that's going to be great uh, so that we don't go back, we don't go back to the past, we don't go to the past, uh, you know what I'm talking about, thank you so much. Um, the new, the NKJV, uh, the English is still very smooth because it's still recent compared to speak it, walk it, you know what I'm saying. So, who is he who speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? There is nobody. It's impossible for anybody to speak when God has not commanded it for that thing to happen. And that's why prayer can reverse anything. Prayer has that ability to reverse anything. And this morning I'm going to tell you um, one, of the, one of the methodologies of prayer reversing things in the life of believer or in the life of anyone that engage, engages in it. Luke chapter 11 from verse 1 to 2. Glory. Luke chapter 11 from verse 1 to 2. Luke chapter 11 from verse 1 to 2. Look at this. I want you to follow me quickly. It says that now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when it ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciple. Now look at verse 2. Quickly look at verse 3. It says that so he said to them, when you pray, say our father in heaven. Can you say that? It's, it says to them, meaning that if you check the verse 1, it was the disciple that came to the Lord Jesus Christ asking him that, please teach us because we've seen the way you pray. We've seen that your life has numerous results and we also want to walk in that kind of results. And they told him that, please teach us how to pray. And the first thing the Lord Jesus Christ said to them was the fact that you say, Father, my Father or our Father in heaven. And remember, Jesus does not just speak anyhow. Jesus speaks intentionally. So when Jesus said that, our Father who is in heaven, what he was telling them is that for you to sustain an effective prayer life, you must start perceiving God as your Father, not just as God. Because God 
is not just God to us as believers. God is our father. The relationship that exists between a father and a son is a smoother relationship. It's a relationship that comes with more faith because you know that your father will definitely go to any extent to do anything for you. But the relationship that exists when you call God, God, is the fact that you begin to see a master and slave relationship. So it's like you are begging for stuff. It's like you are asking for stuff and you're not really sure that it's going to give to you. And that was why Jesus said to them, he said, our father, we is in heaven. And the reason I'm showing you this is because I want you to see a path. He said, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Recall that I told you initially that prayer has the ability to reverse any outcome. It has the ability to reverse any outcome. How does prayer reverse any outcome? It's the fact that your kingdom come. Meaning that every time you pray, what you do is that you introduce the kingdom of God into your life. What is kingdom? Kingdom means a king, um, a domain. That is governed by a king. A territory governed by a king. A country governed by a king. A state governed by a governor. That's the meaning of kingdom. Meaning that within the jurisdiction of that kingdom, the authority of that king is so powerful. And it, within that particular kingdom, there are policies, there are constitution, there are principles, there are things that you should do. For instance, in uh, some part of the world, uh, uh, would this be good? In some part of the world, you see them legalizing same-sex marriage, right? But in some part of the world, if you try it, what happens? Exactly. For some country, it's a death penalty. But for some country, they've accepted it. Every kingdom has their rule, their authority. Every kingdom has their possibility. What I'm saying to you this morning is that in God's kingdom, the things you have in God's kingdom are possibilities that does not exist in this earthly realm. So if things are impossible for you in this earthly realm, every time you introduce the kingdom of God, you bring the possibility of heaven into that thing. And that's why I told you initially that prayer can reverse anything. And that was why Jesus showed up at, showed up at, the, um, at the grave of Lazarus. Martha Mary. Sister Martha Mary. Sister Martha Mary was in the hushing department. They, sorry, hushers. And they ran to the Lord Jesus Christ and they said, Master, 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 if you had come earlier, if you had come earlier, my brother Lazarus, he wouldn't have died. Jesus looked at him and said, don't you understand? I come with the kingdom. In my kingdom, we superimpose life over death. And that was what he looked at them and said, oh, Martha, Mary, don't you understand? I am the resurrection and the life. Meaning, it does not matter the number of days that this man has spent in the top. When I come, he receive life. The same thing you can do to your business. If your business is behaving like something that is dying, when you introduce a kingdom that has life, the business jacks back to life. It jacks back to life. That's the meaning of you. That when Jesus said, thy kingdom come. That's what he's saying. Every time you pray, you introduce a higher kingdom. And the king of that kingdom is God. Meaning that everything that is possible within God is possible around you. Everything that is possible in God is possible around you. Do you know why? Because God is already in your atmosphere. God is already in your atmosphere. It is not happening because of you. It's happening because God is there. Glory to Jesus. So prayer is very powerful. And that's why these are some of the things that I knew about prayer. That you don't need to force me to pray. You don't need to beg me to pray. I know what I'm doing to myself if I pray. And I know what I'm not doing to myself if I'm not praying. The reason is that oh, for some of you, your business, you would have sufficiently built, you would have sufficiently built an invisible kingdom around your business. Uh, people will be wondering, how are you succeeding? They don't know that there is a factor that cannot be seen that is working behind the scene for you. There's a factor. And that's what prayer does for us. Glory to Jesus. I don't want to dwell so much on that. Let me show you the second part so that we can pray. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Before I get into that, a prayerless Christian is a Christian without resources. The reason is that when God comes into your atmosphere, he comes with his resources. The heavens of heaven belongs to the Lord. Didn't you hear what scripture says? Scripture says that the earth is the Lord and the fullness is your. So when God comes, he comes with his totality. So if certain things are not working in the life. Oh, one day Jesus was speaking to his disciples and he was speaking to multitude. 
And they noticed that they were in the wilderness. And it was almost getting dark. And they said, Master, you have a lot of people around here. Where are we going to get bread? Where are we going to get food to feed all of these people? Jesus looked at them. Scripture says, even he himself, he knew what to do. He knew what to do. He looked at them and said, oh my God. He said, what do you have left? He converted what they have left to leftover. He converted what they have left to leftover. The reason is because in God's kingdom, there is no scarcity. In God's kingdom, it is in the natural kingdom that you think one plus one is, is equals to two. In God's kingdom, one plus one can change at any time, depending on what the master says it will be. So one, point, one plus one can be 1.1, 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1 million. You think it is two. One, point, one plus one can be 10. One plus one can be 20. One plus one can be 50, depending on what the master says it is. And that's why I'm saying, when you embrace the ministry called prayer, what you do is that you introduce the possibilities of God around you. Listen to me, great people of God. The way you call destiny helpers is not to lobby around there. You call them in the place of prayer. Listen to me. Men does not answer to CV and resume. They don't answer to all of those. They don't answer to how beautiful you are. Men answer to the call in the spirit. Haven't you noticed there are some people that are wealthy around you. They've never helped you, but they're helping people that they don't know from anywhere. The reason is that men, destiny helpers are called. And the way you call them is you call them in the place of prayer. I'll show you quickly. Because you may think I'm speaking something that is not scripture. I'll show you quickly. Please join with me to the book of Acts of Apostles. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Acts of Apostles chapter 9, verse 10 to 11. Glory to Jesus. Okay, media, please help me quickly. Look at this. I want to show you the story of a man. It says, now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him, church, please, can you help me? Can you help me to read this? Verse 11. For his what? You see, Paul has never met the man in his entire life. He has never met the man. But Paul understood something called the ministry of prayer. It is in the place of prayer you call destiny helpers. It is in place of prayer you call connections and projects and things that you want, you want in your life. It is in the place of prayer. As you join in the place of prayer, what happens is that you call, you beckon on your way. You beckon on Elohim that help me in the things that I cannot help myself. And Elohim begin to search through the head to see the people that he would use for you. Paul has never met him, but that man saw a vision of Paul. Paul has never met him. But that man saw a vision of Paul and God compelled him to go. The next verse. The next verse. He said, and in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sign. Paul was blind. Can you see that? But it took a man that was sent by God for him to receive his sight. What I'm saying to you that it is in the place of prayer, you can call things that does not, that does not look like it. You can call them out. You can call light out of darkness. Light out of darkness. Press the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me quickly rush. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Now, go back to Luke chapter 11. Go back to the Luke chapter 11. Let me show you another part. Uh, let me show you another part. Maybe in the third service, I will be able to show some people more things. Look at the verse 2 again. The verse 2. Let's get to the verse 2. The verse 2. The verse 2 says that. Recall, your kingdom come with that, with that. It says that your will be done. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. One of the things that prayer does to you is that prayer provides divine wisdom for you. Prayer gives you access to divine wisdom. Prayer enables you to understand what to do, when to do it, and with whom to do it. Prayer reduces your error chances. Prayer reduces the chances of error in your life. It reduces the potential, the potential for error in your life. The reason is that you are zooming into the corridor of heaven to understand what God is doing part time. That's what prayer because you are joining, you, you journey with God. You journey with Alpha, the Omega, who knows the hand from the beginning, who declares the hand from the beginning. So the more you pray, the more you see. A prayerless Christian will see less. A prayerless Christian will not have access to relevant information per time. 
and the Lord spoke about, Bible spoke about the children of Issachar. Scripture says they have the understanding of the time. They know what Israel ought to do by time. It does that ability is wielded through the ministry of prayer. Scripture says that the Lord Jesus Christ. Now pay attention to this. Great people of God. I know you've never seen it. Pay attention to this. Jesus will see a blind man. He will look at one. He will say, receive your sight. He will get to another scenario. He will see another blind man. He will bend to the ground and pick sand, spit on it, rub it and put it on his eyes. He will get to another one. He will look at that one. He will lay his hand on it. In fact, there was a time one man said, he's seeing men as crazy. If you leave this one like this, the next person he sees is going to cut the person. Because what do we see to me? We cut the He looked at the car. He received the second touch. Jesus knew what to do at different times for the same situation. What gives you divine wisdom to know how to solve the same problem at different times? It's your constant connection to God through the ministry of prayer. I'll say the one that will bust your bubble. Jesus got to the, to the pool of Bethesda. There were many sick persons there. Jesus only healed one person and left. Have you ever thought about it? He healed just one person and left. He did not bother to go and touch another person. Probably if Jesus had bothered to go and touch another the person would not be healed. He knew what the father was doing part-time. He functioned with the father part-time to know what he's doing. And he does it and he moves. He's not looking for glory. He just peeps. And that's why he said, I am my father. We are one. What I see the father do is what I do. What I see the father do is what I do. I doesn't know what the father does. Scripture says in Mark, it says, A great while in the morning, Jesus will go into a solitary place. And he will begin to pray. Jesus never had a need, but he was praying. He was praying. He was praying. No wonder the devil was recruited to work for Jesus without the devil knowing. Scripture says, oh, Jesus Christ. He said, if he had known, he wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. He was fulfilling his key resort area. His KPI. He met his KPI. But he never knew. What? Oh, my God. See, listen to me. Prayer. The way prayer arranges your life. The way prayer arranges your life. It makes your enemy to be working for you and they don't know. No wonder David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He said, you prepared before me in the presence of my enemy, a table. He was eating in the presence of his enemy, using cutlery, eating good food, and the enemy was watching it. The reason is that prayer is what handicaps your enemy even while they are present. Prayer handicaps them. Let me get back to what I'm saying. Prayer helps you to sustain divine wisdom. You know what to do. A lot of Christians are doing what they are not supposed to do. A lot of Christians are moving into what they are not supposed to do. A lot of Christians are delving into what they are not supposed to do. A lot of Christians are just doing trial and error. In the place of prayer, that's where you sustain the picture of your destiny. That's where you sustain, that's where you catch what God would have you do. It is in the place of prayer. The more you journey with God in the place of prayer, you know what God would have you do. You know what God wants you to do part time. You know what God wants you to get into. There's not a business you are supposed to get into. It is only when you say in the place of prayer that you know what God would like have you do at that particular time. Let me show you a scripture. Let me show you a scripture in Genesis. In Exodus rather. Exodus 25 verse 9. Glory to Jesus. Media help me, help me, help me. Ah, this, this time is a burden. Exodus 25 verse 9. Exodus 25 verse 9. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Look at this. It says, according to all that I show you. Can you say that? According to all that I show you, that is. He said, that is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishing. Just so you shall make it. What God showed what God showed Moses was what God was expecting him to build. He built the tabernacle. He built it in such a way that it reflected what he saw with God when it was, he was at Mount, Mount Sinai. David built what is, I said David, Moses, he built what he saw when he was with God. What have you seen when you were with God? What have you seen? Listen to me. What you see when you were with God will determine what you can seize in life. What you see when you were with God will determine what you will seize in life. It built according to pattern. 
Listen to me. The strategy that works for your friend in his business that is into the same real estate business may not be the same strategy that will work for you. Sometimes you need to journey with God in the place of prayer to download your own personal strategy that will make you work, that will make your business work. But we copy too much. Christians don't want to journey with God in the place of prayer. Christians are probably lazy. They don't want to do the work with God. So we keep copying and we keep making a lot of error. But God is saying that if you come to me, I can show you the way into the same. He says that the way of a fool, he says he weary him because he does not know the way into the city. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Some of you need to open the pages of the scripture to understand what God is saying about your life. To understand what God would have you do. Because what God would have you do would make a lot of difference in your life. Scripture says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 about the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, he said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book that was written of me. Please show that scripture. Thank you very much. He said, then I said, behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. To do what? To do your will. You do what is written in the volume of the book. You do what is written in the script. You do what is written in the script. Who is an actor here, please? Who is an actor here? Do you mind coming to the stage, sir? Any actor that is willing to come to the stage? You do what is written in your script, not what is written outside your script. A lot of believers are doing what is not within their script. Thank you very much, sir. Please, can I have a mic for him? Thank you so much, sir. I want to ask you three questions. If you're asked to come and act in a particular movie, and or if you call someone to come and act in a particular movie of yours, and you give the person a script, you give the person a script, but the person never opened the script. The person never read what is in the script, but the person came to the scene where you're supposed to act and started acting. Do you think the person will act what is in the script? Tell us. It, it doesn't make sense. Will he, act, will he act what is in the script? It's not even it's not possible. He said, can you say? He says, the man said, it's not possible for him to act what he has not seen. In fact, if the man forces, if the actor forces himself to act, what is he going to act? Nonsense. Yes, Disalignment. Right? He will be disaligned with the movie. Will you call him again? Never. That is how some people are outdated in the agenda of God. Because they've never paid attention to divine script. Where the orders of their life, the future of their life, what they're supposed to do on earth, where it is written. They've never paid attention to it. That's why they are not relevant in the agenda. God cannot use them. I'm not saying you are not going to have money. Thank you, sir. I'm not saying you are going, not going to have money. Money is not the, is not the unit, is not the, is not the SI unit that God uses to measure men in heaven. Money, you will never carry it to heaven. The way God measures men in heaven is that I gave you a purpose. There is something written concerning in you have you fulfilled it have you done it i'm not talking about money i'm not talking about you build an investment maybe for some of you with what you are building god is expecting you to do something but you've not entered into that you've not entered into that purpose inside the business that god has given you it is in the press place of prayer that you download the agendas and the will of god it is in the place of prayer you align with god what you don't know we bring you low what you don't know it becomes your master that's how we are relevant. And that's why prayer is very important. That's why prayer is very important. So the more you journey with God, the more you know what to do. Listen to me. In this few years of mine, one of the things I paid attention to is to journey with God. It's to understand what God wants me to do part time. That's when you will begin to understand the meaning of the definition of delay. You will not... You will not define your life by the success of other people. You will not define what you're doing by the success of other people. You define your life, the progress of your life, based on what is written in your own manuscript. Based on what is written concerning you. You define your life based on those things. But people are not praying, so they don't know what the Father is saying. The one that Moses said, God said to him, be careful to make sure that you build according to the pattern that I've shown you. When you build according to the pattern, that's what makes you relevant in the hand of God. God finds you useful. Hope you know you are going to return back to God one day and give an account and say, this is the way I, do, this is the way I live my life. This is are the things that I did with my life. So prayer is just beyond we using prayer to just get things. Will you get things? Yes. But your ability to sustain wisdom that comes from God is through the ministry of prayer. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. 
So how therefore do you sustain the ministry of prayer? Number one, desire it. What you don't desire, you can never have. Yeah, what you don't desire, you can never have. Recall, prayer is not a gift, it's an habit. So don't think some people are gifted to pray. No, habits are cultivated. So you cultivate how to pray. It's not easy to pray. You think it's easy to pray? It's not easy. It's not easy to pray. I'm not here to tell you that it's easy to pray. No, it's not easy. You condition yourself to pray. And that's why you have things that support you to pray. There are certain scriptures you read. Pastor Balaji told us yesterday at the conference. It, there are certain scriptures you read. If you don't want to pray, you will pray. If you don't want to pray. For instance, thou anointed my head with oil and my cup runneth over. How do you anoint a man on his head and his cup is running over? How? The oil came on his head, but the influence is showing in his business. How? When you read such scripture, you are motivated to pray. You are motivated to pray. You look for things that can help you to pray because it's not easy to pray. And that's why sometimes you look for some songs that can help you to pray. By the time you look for some songs, some songs are five minutes. Some songs are seven minutes. By the time you do five minutes, you do it six times. You would have done 30 minutes. By the time you do it 12 times, you would have done one hour. That's how you condition yourself to pray. Prayer is not easy. You cultivate it. You all about one about. You put it on repeat. It's not. E Listen to me. You what you call an habit. How do you know how to watch a Nigerian movie? You sit down with it now. How? You sit with it. Are you because sometimes some people have a dick when they are watching those movies, but they will sit. A dick. They have a dick, and but they will sit down. Yes, yeah, so sometimes you will feel sleepy when you are praying. Stay there. It's better for you to sleep in the presence of God than not praying at all. It's better. When you sleep today for 20 minutes, the next time it will, it will reduce to 19 minutes. One minute has gone out of it. But you are growing because if you think that prayer is wielded for some select few, you will never pray. And that's why sometimes you find an association too that can help you pray. You join cell, you find an association. There are some people that when you stay around them, if you don't want to pray, you will pray. If you don't want to pray, you will pray. I should be careful of this one. Find the right association. That can help you pray. Join a cell. That can help you pray. Join us. Like today in ourselves, it's, it's self-prayer day. If you don't want to pray, don't go to the cell. As soon as you come to the cell, either you like it or not, for like 45 minutes you will pray. That's how you force yourself to pray. If you don't have system around you to pray, you will never pray. You will never pray. Prayer is not, an, it's not a gift. It's an habit. But it is that habit that can create the habitat of God in your life. Let's rise to our feet. And let's join in the place of prayer. Ah, 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 Hold on, listen to me. Listen to me. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Media, please help me put it up. Romans chapter chapter 8, verse 26. I want to teach you a principle. Can you help me with that table? Help me with the table. Help me with the table. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. It says that likewise. The spirit helped our infirmity. You see, the infirmity you see there does not necessarily mean um, sickness. Does not necessarily mean sickness. It means weakness, frailty, your limitation. It says that likewise, the spirit also helps our weakness. That help, that help, that help is the Greek word that is called sunantilambano. I'm going to explain what I mean. And what that means is that 
the way the spirit of the living God helps you is that he does not hijack your prayer life for you is that he partners with you to allow your prayer life to make sense and that's why he's saying that if you want to sustain wait hold on sir hold on you can hold on he says if you want to sustain a powerful and effective prayer life learn to pray in, in tongues learn to pray in, in tongues learn to pray in heart the spirit learn to pray in tongues he says but this is what happens to you it's called sunatin and battle this is what happens to you that he helps you he helps you you want to pray you want to pray as you want to pray you don't have the strength you are trying to carry it you are trying to carry it you are trying to carry it. you started two minutes your body is weak you just came back from work but your body is weak you are carrying it you can feel the pain in your body but you keep you keep on you continue as you journey in praying in other tongues a common ash a keep writing the body is weak in la cobra tina in la shakabaya in la comenesh a crop in la you are trying before you know the holy spirit helps you to carry it it carries it it carries it then it becomes easier it becomes easier you don't feel the weight again a shake of fire and let go manage you don't feel the weight again it has taken over you this this morning can you give something to the holy spirit to carry for you pray in other tongues a shaka tata a cold in a tona a shaka tikape come on lift up your hands to jesus He says we know not what we should pray for as we ought to you don't know how to pray you don't know what to pray for but every time you pray in tongues you pray better you pray better you don't know what is wrong with that business but when you pray in the holy ghost the holy ghost i jack the prayer from you he prays what should be praying he prays it out he prays it out if you are here and you're not baptized in the holy ghost this is your opportunity now if you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, go ahead and download mysteries by praying in other tongues. Come on, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands now. This curse is coming over you now. If you are not baptized in the Holy Ghost, it's coming over you. It's coming over you. Holy Spirit of God. Come on, come on, come on. Take over your people. Take over your people. It's a deliverer. Yes, he was a day. I got the dilemma. Yes, she did it. She got a shepherd. Oh, let it sit. Let my tongue on. Shut the canon. My total name is Shana. Yes, Shana. Now, now we want to channel. So high rise in your name i rest in your name so i rise in your name i rest akayaba is carry you na i rest i rest so i rest Hold on. Let's 
listen to me there are some things that are taught there are some things that are caught there are some things that are taught there are some things that are caught you are in an atmosphere where you can catch anything where you can catch anything there's an atmosphere when nothing is impossible and no disease incurable there's an atmosphere there's an atmosphere when nothing is impossible and no disease is incurable let me show you a scripture media can you help me Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 to 18 ah the new KJV look at this this will begin to happen to you now as we read, as we read and pray it will begin to happen to you, you will begin to have access to unusual information you begin to know what to do, some of you your eyes will be open in this service now it will be open in this service, you begin to see visions of the spirit you, things will happen to you, look at it it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him verse 18 ah, yeah, 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 yeah. it says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know no no what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saint say i lift lift, lift up your voice say i have access to unusual wisdom i have access to unusual wisdom this morning i have access to divine wisdom lift up your voice Pray and let them begin to download. Let them begin to download. Eshela koda, hapele noza, shela, mambela kera, mambela kera nele, mambela ke, ela bakola poda, shela, shela. Father, love my God and my Father, I see Jesus seated on the throne. I see Jesus seated. Come on, come on, come I on, come be on. Jesus come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There is a grace for prayer in the house. I see Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Catch something this morning. Ah, Jesus. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. All over here. Shit, don't touch All over. Katete. Emerson. The spirit of prayer, the spirit of prayer. I release the spirit of prayer. I release the spirit of prayer. I release the spirit of prayer. Spirit of prayer. Everywhere in the auditorium. Oh, Shaka. The spirit of prayer. Oh, you can take it. I can take it. I be oh, Jesus. I see it. When you are here, when you are here, when you are here, that's right. When you are here, cut them on. You are here, and men are too cold. You are here, and she called you. I tell not, I tell not, men be a full sick heart. I said, Yes, I come in. It's a total. It's Shakyana. It's Shakyana.
Now, because there is an emblem of prayer on you, let me show you a verse. Job 38, verse 12. If you have the NIV version or the new KJV, anyone, Job 38, verse 12. Come on, utilize what is upon you now. I want to show you this dangerous scripture. Job 38, verse 12. Media, please help us. I want you to utilize what is on you now. Look at this. It says, Have you ever given orders to your morning? Have you ever shown the dawn its place? Meaning you can command your morning to look the way you want it to look. Meaning you can command your day to look the way you want it to look. Meaning you can command your year to look the way you want it to look. Meaning you can speak to the day. You can tell it what to do. You can tell it what to do. I give you 30 seconds. Begin to command your year. Begin to command the next year. Command the next half of the year. Command July. It's filled with the deeds of the Lord. Command your business. Command your life. I shut it. Command it. I shut it. I shut it. Tell it how it should be. When you are here, command it. When you are here, when you are here, you are Media, can you give us the new KJV of this same verse? Look at it. God is waiting on you to command your day. He says, have you command the morning since the day you were given birth to? Have you caused the dawn to know its place? Listen to me. The economy of this world cannot determine the economy of your life. It is the decision you choose. If you choose the economy of this world, you live by it. I know that there are different things happening around us. There is flood everywhere. The business of some people may be going down. But as a believer, there is a way you don't look at the flood in the natural. But you look at the flood gate of heaven. You look at the flood gate of heaven. When others are saying there is a casting down. For me and my family, I say there is a lifting. I want to give you another 30 seconds to change the narrative around your life. To change the negative atmosphere around your life. Everything that is not of God. Everything that is not of God. I command it to be changed. Come on, change. Come on. It's shut it. Media, leave that scripture. Media, please leave that scripture. Parent, this is the way you shape the destiny of your children. You command, you command their destiny to go in the right way. You command their destiny to go in the right way. Even if they are in UK, their life will still be okay. If you leave them there, you are not there. The investment of your prayer, it guides their lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for you. Every testimony with your name on it that is still hanging. Elika Pahansu Stelishka. A man of Stoveka brand the shenda coli and the prasti. A candest to fele shilandos ko brand the stida. I command, let that testimony enter your hand this week. Let that testimony, let it enter your hand this week. Aha. Uh -huh. Let that testimony enter your hand this week. Aha. Shekatepadena. I say 
someone in foot in footwear business footwear business footwear business the Lord is carrying you by the wings of the spirit I see someone in that foot footwear business the Lord is carrying you by the wings of the spirit let that testimony enter your heart I should tell him on a berry, a berry, there is a change of season for you now. A berry, a berry, there is a change of season for you right now. A berry, there is a change of season for you now. I can't deny you. Shepherd de la Madonna. As you go, all things will work together for your good. And you will return with testimonies. Come and celebrate Jesus. Please have your seat in God's presence. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, I'm looking forward to one day. We'll just be in a place. Two hours. Rest to pray. Three hours. Rest to pray. Four hours, we are still praying. Five hours, we are still praying. Six hours, we are still praying. Hope you know, a prayerful man is a man you should fear. A prayerful man is a man you should fear. Don't joke with a prayerful man. No. Because in the place of prayer, a prayerful man can enact mercy to cover up for his error. Don't argue with people. Just go back. You are more powerful on your knee than arguing. new than personally someone tells you at your place of work I'll deal with you send a message to the best way the reason I'm sending this message to you is because I love you and I don't I don't want you to experience what you not like that's why I'm sending this message because left me or I'm not going to do anything but the moment you send that thing there are some constellations there are some there are some harmonies there are some hammies in heaven that head. It is you that think you are without help. Elisha said to his servant, Why are you afraid? Because they've come, they are here to arrest us. He said, What's wrong with you? Why are you afraid? He said, Master, these are soldiers' army. He said, What's wrong with you? He said, Father, open his eyes. You don't need to open my eyes because constantly I know that they are there. He said, Open his eyes. By the time the guy saw the army, confidence entered into him. For we are surrendered. Sur surrounded cloud of witnesses. You are more powerful on your name than anywhere. The Queen of Scotland said, I fear nothing in England than the prayer of John Knox. 